Hi, I'm going to tell you all about how I saw hell. How I saw hell. Now, let's get some backstory. This is pretty interesting. And I found God, too. I found God in Jesus, and that's the only way to be saved is by either having tremendous faith in your conscience and being in touch with what you know is right inside them. We all have a conscience. We all have a conscience. So that's very difficult. It's almost like going through the dark and not being able to see unless you find God and Jesus and follow the Bible. And it's all shown to us in the Bible. Jesus was a real man that came down to earth to show us <coughs> um, how to be, how everything was created. He got it all written in, into the Bible and had people go out and tell everybody what it really is, the real truth about everything. There's nothing to worry about because when we're good and we follow Jesus and God and we have faith that we're doing good and faith that heaven exists and God exists and God is real and God created everything, then we'll be okay. We'll all be okay. It's difficult here on earth sometimes, really difficult, but it gets okay again. It gets okay again. So keep having faith. And one person who God created, one of the angels, the most kind at times, I guess, but the most beautiful angel, physically beautiful, perfect, like God. God's the only one who's perfect in every way. But he had perfect looks. And he thought it made him better than others and he started to be really mean and have wickedness and he's the devil he's the devil and we're going to look at something right here that talks about that talks about who he is or was his name is Lucifer or was Lucifer fallen angel and here's how I looked him up went to Google, said, why did God create the devil? That some of the more atheist people might say, well, why did God create the devil? Well, here it is. I clicked on this link. Let's look at this source. Harvest.org. Whatever it happens to be the website, and this one's a good one. Let's see what it says. Let's see what it says. <coughs> Where did the devil come from? To put it another way, how could a God of love create someone as horrible as the devil? Let's go down here. He didn't create him as the devil we know. He created him as a beautiful, kind angel. Like everyone else in heaven was. Named Lucifer. Means star of the morning. A star is not bad. That's how he was created. The star is something good. Part of the heavens that God created. In addition to the earth, the earth, he created the earth and he created the heavens, which were less finished than the earth. The earth is where the people created in him his image and likeness. Or his his image are all made. Starting with Adam and Eve. Okay. Here, let's talk about the. You want to see? You want to see what happened to um, the devil and how he. He's gonna. He's gonna burn in the. Um, lake of fire for all eternity one day for what he did. He's been really bad, worse than any other. Being, who's ever existed, so he probably cannot be saved, for what he did. He would have to suffer for all eternity it says in the Bible and he will but now he's trying to see if he can fight God and prove that he's more powerful than God and better than God and this talks about it it says in the Bible you are the model of perfection this is about Lucifer full of wisdom and perfect in beauty you are in Eden the garden of God you are anointed as a guardian cherub for, I, for so I ordained you to be a cherub powerful cherub angel you were on the holy mount of God you walked around the fiery stones you were blameless in your ways from the day you were created 
until wickedness was found in you. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence. He was a worker of unrighteousness. That's talked about in the Bible. Workers of unrighteousness on earth. They make a habit out of meanness to others to get a lot of stuff for themselves, and it's really bad. Looking back on your whole life and your career, were you one of those people, or have you had habits in your career of being mean to others, workers of unrighteousness? Because when when the kingdom of when you go to the kingdom of heaven to be judged after death, God will say, "I never knew you. You were you you were a worker of unrighteousness and meanness." And that's what happened to Lucifer. He became that way through his widespread trade. He was filled with violence, and he sinned. And no one else really sinned. I, I believe no one else sinned besides some of the other angels who went down with him. And it talks about that here. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God, and I expelled you, O guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, of his physical beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to earth, I made a spectacle of you before kings. And that's in Ezekiel 28, 12-17. This is cherubim depicting scripture as powerful, majestic, angelic creatures who surrounded God's throne. Not just the baby cherub, not just the baby cherubs. Lucifer had once been a guardian cherub. Ironically, after Adam and Eve succumbed to the devil's temptations, disobeyed by God, and were expelled from Eden, God sent cherubim to guard Eden. Well, cherubim were still really good. That's from Genesis 3:24. He says in this article, God's judgment on Lucifer. Lucifer was not satisfied with worshiping God. and said he wanted to be worshipped. He wanted to be worshipped as a false god, lowercase g-o-d. Once a beautiful, powerful angel of God, he lost his former exalted position in heaven. <clears throat> this is from Isaiah 14, 12 to 15. It says here, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation of the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. He, he, he thought... He thought he'd be like God and strong, better feeling than he was. However, he shall be brought down to Sheol, to the low steps of the pit. This, the pit is a place in hell. It's called the pit. The actual pit. Not the mosh pit. That's something different. That can be okay, but not this pit. This is some place in hell. <coughs> And that's from Isaiah 14, 20, 15. Lucifer, star of the morning, became Satan. Ooh, I can't even say his name. I don't like saying it. The devil. I call him the devil because he's like a common devil like the rest of them. So saying that is not as bad. Putting it lowercase. When he fell to the earth. Jesus speaking of this event. Because you don't want to call to that type of power. It's going to hurt people. He leads people into temptation. He leads people into temptation. He brings them down to hell. He fools them. He tricks them into getting earthly things. He's the lowercase G-O-D of this earth. And, you know, you don't want to listen to him because God's everywhere. God's everywhere. God knows everything. God is omniscient. God is all-powerful, all-knowing. He has all knowledge of everything of the past, present, and future. So he knows that um, some of the heavens and earth the heavens and earth are not as perfect you know heaven is pretty close to perfect God is perfect other people are flawed I, and Jesus speaking of this event Jesus himself said I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven and that's from Luke 10 18 Lucifer's followers, when Satan, listen to this, this is interesting, when 
when when the devil fell, he did not fall alone. Scripture tells us that he took one third of the angels. That's from Revelation twelve four. Considering that the angelic host numbers more than are more than ten thousand times ten thousand. That's in Revelation five eleven. That is a sizable group. Ten thousand times ten thousand is one hundred million angels. 100 million angels so in hell and people have said that they have seen this when they've had out of body experiences they've seen they've been brought to hell and shown and protected by Jesus to let them see what it is how scary and horrible it really is unimaginable compared to what's on the earth and then how beautiful and almost infinitely be more beautiful than the earth or anything else heaven is so um, this, the angels at the time were a hundred million about it looks like a hundred million ten thousand times ten thousand revelation five eleven so he took one third of the angels with him he had convinced a third of the angels that's pretty terrible and um, they fell with him Their purpose, according to Jesus, are to those purposes that they have, him and his demons, now they're called demons, are to steal, kill, and destroy. Ugh, how horrible. Steal, kill, and destroy. That's terrible. That's from John 10.10. 10. That's the bad news. The good news is that two-thirds of the angels are on our side. As the prophet Elijah said to his servant, don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. That's what that says from 2 Kings 16, 6, 6, 6, no, I don't even want to say it. They try to trick you into saying the devil's name. That's a bunch of garbage. You know what? The devil doesn't even stand a chance. That That's one thing that it says in the Bible that says, you know, not to be afraid. However, God is infinitely more powerful than any being and all beings ever created on earth and it's impossible for anything to happen to that he's the one who created everything and knows everything and you can't go against that no one is going to be more powerful than that and be able to take that over it would be horrible so the one person who tried was the devil and he's going to burn in the lake of fire for all eternity and that's just how it, that's actually how it is you know the devil doesn't stand a chance you don't want to be tricked by the devil or anything because any human who, who goes along with the devil is going to be tormented in unimaginable horrible ways unimaginable horrible ways does not stand a chance even those demons who used to be angels very powerful angels who were um, I guess immortal in some ways they lived forever and um, not an immortal but you know they lived forever we, we'll say they were cast down to hell for being so mean and they were going to eventually perish in the lake of fire forever they're still going to we all live forever all our souls are forever forever we either go to heaven or hell when we die or we're judged after we die based upon how we lived our life and you either go to heaven or hell and i was shown hell and i'm going to talk about it I was shown hell. I was shown hell, and it was terrible. It was really bad. Now, I didn't at the time <clears throat> look in the Bible every day or study the Bible, and I was raised Catholic and believing in God and Jesus, and I had a good faith in Jesus, but I didn't read that much about it or know that much about it. However, the one thing that I did know was that I was kind to others I was kind to others but I was kind of in the dark because I didn't follow God and Jesus so I couldn't really see where I was going without really following God and Jesus and reading the Bible and understanding it so I messed up here and there like anyone else will who does not believe in God and Jesus and does not follow God and Jesus and does not have that higher knowledge and understanding which 
does not come from a degree. It does not come from it comes from the anything besides re reading the Bible. It's in the Bible for you to understand. You can get a degree. It's not going to hurt someone necessarily, but that's another random thing that we try to do on Earth that you know you may or may not need depending on if it's kind to your parents and they want you to get it or something like that you know it's not the what's really important is understanding the Bible what it says in the Bible and I've only been reading it a lot more without the Bible I had a very strong faith and I had to do really difficult stuff on my faith alone really difficult stuff on my faith alone that I didn't understand but when I saw hell um, I'll describe what I saw. It was horrific. It was at a time when I had stopped taking my psychiatric medicine as much and I couldn't sleep. They didn't tell you that it would make it so you can't sleep. But I also lost all my appetite and desire to drink fluids. I, I didn't want to drink any water or food and it was hard to drink water or food and then that made me happy because I thought I was losing weight and getting in shape and I didn't realize wait a second I am barely sleeping like I'd sleep an hour or two but then I couldn't eat any food so I was so happy that I was losing weight that I didn't notice hey I'm really not getting enough sleep really not getting enough sleep so after a few weeks of that it got really bad and um, I started um, really kind of hallucinating but I saw it in a very clear way it was kind of like how Jesus went through the desert in some ways because I you know I, I was very Jesus like and at first I got weaker and weaker and weaker and I tried to be very kind of Jesus like I thought the end of the work earth was happening I thought the end of the earth was or the end of America actually the end of America and it was really hot in October <laughs> I had a shirt on like this, I had a shirt on like this, and on my right shoulder, somewhere on my right shoulder, um, a, a tree branch or something hit my shirt, and it cut a, a big scratch straight down, and something else cut a big scratch across it, and they made a Christian cross, and it was so hot, it was so hot, and I was wandering around outside asking people to please ask forgiveness for your sins so you'll be saved. I didn't understand how. I did not understand how, but it must have been something that I had heard growing up Catholic. Um, and I knew, but and it was so hot in October on the East Coast where, the, where you know, the um, it was fall. It was fall, and it shouldn't have been that hot, but it was so hot that it sunburned my arm, and it burned the cross into my arm. And uh, that was already scratched. And um, I did my best, and I thought I might be, be Jesus, because I knew so little. I thought maybe I was supposed to be Jesus, because I didn't know that he never sinned on earth, and it was impossible for me to be Jesus, because Jesus is God's son, and Jesus didn't sin at all. He was amazing. He never he never had sex. He... he um, he didn't sin at all. It must have been so difficult for him to be that way. And all other humans sin. So I didn't know. I didn't know. I was flawed. I did I was wrong. And I thought maybe I was Jesus. So I kept trying to go around and preach to people. And I was starved and dehydrated. I had hardly any sleep for weeks. And um, I thought the end of the world was happening. It burned a Christian cross into my shoulder scratched and burned it burned it with the sunburn it was it was getting hot I thought the end of America was gonna happen and I could start seeing monkeys and um, or hearing monkeys and trees like something was gonna happen horrible to America based upon what had happened I don't want to talk about it too much with Obama coming into office and being very, very liberal and reaching out to our worst enemies who, who we had made a habit of hurting to be America um, in the ways that we sinned. Because sin is inevitable on earth, so at a big scale level we had done that. All those white presidents and everything, you know, looking down on Africa and other nations like that. So it was kind of like inviting all the hurt that we did to them back on us when Obama had been in office. 
And um, I think if I had not acted something, I had to go out there and do a necessary evil. And I had gotten so weak, I thought they were going to do these horrific things. And I could see every, I could see a lot of it, a lot of the details of what they were going to do to me for how I had been. They were going to bring me down to hell, I think, for like a few hundred years or something like that. I, I, it was pretty clear they were going to do it for a few hundred years. And though hell is forever, forever. Once people really go there, it's forever. But I, at the time, I could see, I thought they were going to bring, I could start seeing these places underground when I was looking online and um, looking out my window and going out there and stuff. I could start to hear it. I could hear the sounds of how they um, use giant heavy machinery and get down into the earth. And there's some people that I thought could get into the earth and were part of this big Illuminati stuff. And I didn't know it was really hell that I was seeing. It was really hell because I heard plenty of testi testimonies. Um, of, I heard plenty of people, for, or for lack of a better word, um, their truth people telling the truth about how they were shown hell by Jesus and God safely shown hell to, for Jesus to protect them and show them and um, they described it almost exactly the same as I saw it and the way that one is down there I thought it was an Illuminati place and I didn't know for years I, I kept it that fear that like it drove me. I thought I was going to be brought down there, have my arms and legs ripped off, these horrors, these sexual n horrific nightmares that do not happen on earth because they're so horrible. The really, really bad stuff. Way worse than anything they can do to anyone on earth. Way worse than anything they can do to anyone on earth. And I'll do one of these. And it's really bad down there. It's like a hyper fat. It's Hyper is a bad word. That's for kids. You know, we're hyper. I, I was hyper when I ate sugar and stuff. It's a... You know how they say, oh, he's fast. He's fast. He's a fast one. It means nothing. That in the Bible means nothing. It doesn't matter if you're fast or slow. That means nothing. That's an earthly thing. That's not good, necessarily. Um, but down in hell... They torment you at this like way faster than normal speed. That that you know, for those of you out there who may go to hell, if there are any, hopefully pray to God that none of you do. And you was meant to talk about people who. Hopefully none of us go there. Say a prayer. None of us go there. Um, it's really bad. It's this unimaginable level of torment and torture and suffering down there. That's not like the earth. The curse words they use are way worse than anything anyone says on earth. Just so horrible. And that's how I knew when I heard when I heard um, other people talking about how they saw hell, I knew it was the same place. And then I was like, that's hell. I didn't know it I didn't know it was hell. I thought it was an Illuminati underground facilities and stuff that were in the earth and some people could come up and down depending on, you know, like those are just demons who I think can do that because they used to be fallen angels but I didn't understand what it was all about and I thought it was an Illuminati thing so I had to get bigger and more mean because the devil tricked me into making me sin way worse like a homophobia like a homophobia at the time I thought there there was unlimited rape that they could do like thousands of people doing things to you and um you know, not you in particular, but, you know, just really bad stuff, really bad stuff, um, incest, and just horrible things, just nightmarish things that no one should want to do, but not regular ways on earth, not regular earthly ways, but way worse than earthly ways, like, um, hell ways, like the, de the devil and the demon's ways of constantly being mean to one another down there is their only way that, they can try to, they think that they, you know, the way that the devil originally planned his, his work of unrighteousness, his work of unrighteousness that he made, he was the first one to do that sort of thing, and it's bad, it's not worth looking good, looking good, you know, I feel bad, because I was somewhat of a worker of unrighteousness, but I had been an unattractive, I think I was kind of, I got unattractive for a while, when I was like 19, 
I think I was 18, 19. A little after that, I was kind of here and there. I had problems and issues with it. Like I thought it didn't look good enough. So it was okay. God granted me to feel okay with my appearance later on. And now as I get older, I'm thinking, you know, I may have to start aging. It's, it's about to, you know, I, you know, I may, I may just keep looking good. I might be one of those people who's 70 and has a young looking face, you know, or 70 something and has a young looking face. I don't know. But I know that God made us to age. He made us all to perish in age. So, um, that was how I saw hell. And one of the things that I saw when I hadn't slept for a long time, it was very real. It was very real, the things that I saw. And, um, it was, I looked out the window and saw this, my neighbor being pulled up on a cross, these like demon type creatures in the, in the shadows, just as they just, other people have described now. And I know it was hell. And, um, heaven is infinite more beautiful it's so beautiful in the ways that they are to others not in appearance not in appearance that's the thing it's not appearance it's it's um like right now I have the camera set up up high to look down on me so I don't have a fat neck and I'm trying to look as good as I can because it makes me feel happy to look good <laughs> but it's not it's not the most important thing at all never the most important thing it's about your inner beauty and your soul that's what it's all really about your beauty no matter how old you are it could be a 90 year old with a big body you know 90 something year old like like um an old lady that's big and heavy you know I, it doesn't matter you know, if i'm kind to them and act like we're kind of the same looking and you know um uh it, it's okay with me i just want to i i I, I don't just want anything. I want so much more. You don't ever want to limit yourself to one thing. But I believe in kindness to others, following God and Jesus. And what they did is they showed me my neighbor, these little demon, these kind of like four foot tall demons or something like that, three or four foot tall in the shadows. Um, I looked out the window and could see them. And they very clearly pulled my neighbor up on a cross like he was suffering really bad like he was in hell and um they started hurting his body breaking his arms and horrific things to his whole body really that's how they do things down there so you don't want to make a habit out of anything bad a little bit bad even in your thoughts because god knows what you're thinking god knows what you're thinking he knows everything so be kind Maybe a little more difficult here and there. Don't worry about it. It'll be okay. Just be kind to others and follow God. You know, it's not just you gotta follow God and Jesus. That'll show you the way. So these demon things were pulling him up on a cross, and the big cross I could see in his living room. I could see in his living room. A light was on, enough for me to see. And then he was suffering so bad they kept hurting. Him, would not let him go kept hurting him hurting him hurting him and fight they brought in his 16 year old daughter and the only ways that they would allow him to stop suffering from the beatings breaking his arms doing horrible bad feeling things to his body every you know the details that they were doing that hurt him they tried to let make his daughter sexy on him and um that was the only way he had relief from the horrible beings and he didn't want to but a way to get him to sin more you know um, to force try to make him sin more so he'd be stuck down there in hell in an earthly way in hell forever and would not be able to get up to heaven to get into heaven with God and Jesus and they were really doing horrible things to him and then they I heard a like a sound the way they make things down in the hell like a mean sound very mean <laughs> Like a meanness, I would never do it now on Earth. And um, like it, the lights shut off, and that was the end of the show that they showed me. And um, I didn't know what to think of it. And I kept being kind and more godly, and Jesus-like, asking people to find forgiveness and for their sins. But I was doing it on faith alone. I didn't know enough about the Bible yet, so the devil tricked me. I'd gotten so weak and thought they were going to do these horrors to my body and everything. 
and was so worried and got tricked by the devil that I started eating all this red meat when I was a vegan. Red meat's not bad. That says in the Bible we have dominion on the animals, so we can eat we can eat um, meat. That's okay. But at the time I was a vegan, and I kind of prefer eating that way just personally. But I still think it's okay to eat meat. Um, so we have dominion on the animals. You know, they're they're not to be treated like humans. Um, but um, I started eating red meat at every meal in a mean way. Like it was hurting them like they do down in hell or something. And like everything that I did became mean because I was driven by fear. I thought they were going to do that horrible stuff down in hell to me. I thought the way to get away from it was to get as much money as I could so no one could incapacitate me and put me in a hospital and bring me down to that real Illuminati facility that was down there. That's where I thought it was a real, very real place that I saw. Very real. And, um, it was hell and I didn't know it took three years or years later and then I started or slowly started to understand I became a more kind person but I wasn't mean for three years I was I started being kind within a few months I was only that mean I became a worker of unrighteousness I would go out there and work for my dad's business and he didn't know he was kind he's kind he was he works in kindness my dad works in kindness, he works very hard, he's a kind person, and I started making a habit of unrighteousness out of everything that I did. I made parallels to when I was raking something, I pretended it was like, do it. I don't do it anymore. I pretended it was do, hurting someone or something like that, like everything that I did, and it was really bad. And um, eventually, I had to have that happen again. I, I um, went off my medicine again, trying to stop the medicine I thought I was like dependent on. And this time, I kept being kind and Jesus-like, and and I was so kind and Jesus-like that I thought they were gonna bring me down to hell. I thought I'd have to go through. I'd have to be arrested like Jesus was and all this bad stuff happen, um, go to prison, have a prison break, the end of the world would happen, I thought I'd have to be the big messiah and save the world or something, and all these ideas that I didn't know, I thought, because I didn't know the real truth about the Bible, and I kept having faith in just being as kind and good as I could, and I was nice to anyone who I may have hurt in my thoughts, I was nice to everybody no matter what like I thought oh I would have been mean to that person back when the devil tricked me but I still didn't know about the Bible I did it all in faith on blind faith I, I didn't know very much there's some God and Jesus stuff that I grew up understanding about as a child I was raised Catholic so that was good that helped me to be kind that helped me to know something about it and um, I thought they were gonna maybe bring me down to the Illuminati place still. I didn't know it was hell yet. I thought they were gonna bring me down to the Illuminati place and like cut off my arms, legs, and stuff like that. And it used to be a real fear though. These at the time it was like whatever, you know, now it's not a fear at all anymore. And the way that I got over my fear, and I was a homophobe. I was a homophobe. Me of all people who was like into alternative and kind of like friends with gay people and it didn't bother me at all. I, you know, I was kind and nice and never the type that would be like a red meat eating big truck Republican and all that, that the devil tricked me into, you know, doing for the wrong reasons. Now I would drive a truck or um, be a little bit Republican on some issues. Think about this. If you're a liberal, say you're a liberal, um, family values are Republican. Some Republican stuff is good. They believe in standing up for your family, so they're okay. And um, I'm not all Republican. I'm liberal on some issues. You know, um, I I don't know if either one of them are actually what they say they really are. They have changed, in in his, you know, they. I believe in God and Jesus. I believe in God and Jesus and kindness to others. 
So what happened was the second time I went off my medicine, it was a couple, three, it was years later. And I had already started been, being a more kind person on my own from faith and got back to a little bit how I really was inside. My, my regular kind self that's kind of my personality was, eh, was kind of more liberal. <laughs> I was kind of more liberal, a vegan, you know, stuff. That was my own particular personality. I got back to being that. But I learned through this second experience to be kind. You know, the, the, the Republican people are just as kind. They're the same. I, 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 um, as a liberal in many ways, it, it doesn't matter if you're Republican or liberal. That's an earthly thing that doesn't matter. It's about following God and Jesus. Got following God and Jesus. Okay, here's the thing. The second time it happened, I had faith and kept being kind and kind to everyone, no matter what. And they put me in a hospital. I went across the nation trying to be kind to people everywhere I went. And they put me in a mental facility because I was so dehydrated. And I was trying to be like Jesus, and I thought I had to. So, because that was what I happened to know in the Bible, and I thought I had to be kind. Because for my conscience, that was the best way I knew to be kind to others, like Jesus but I thought in my head maybe I had to be Jesus because I knew so little about what it really says in the Bible. But from the small amount I knew, I kept trying to be good as best as I could. And I had faith. And, and I was kind. And they got me on medicine. And the, it got just as bad as the other time when um, they got, the medicine they gave me was to go to sleep. To actually finally get to sleep because I could not sleep. They gave me, um, I forgot what it was, some prescription medicine to make me sleep. These little, this little pill that helped me fall asleep. And I was afraid to take it at first, so I'd pretend and put it in my mouth and I'd throw it away because I thought they were going to try to bring me to hell <laughs> or something like that. But I, it wasn't hell. It was an Illuminati place I was afraid of. I didn't know if it was hell or not, but I was starting to realize, hey, I think it might be hell. Um... And I was kind through the whole thing, no matter how difficult it was. I thought I was gonna go to have to go to prison, and this whole and way worse, be raped, given AIDS. And the thing that helped me get over it is because I was stuck on some of these wrong ideas. I was stuck on the law of attraction, the law of attraction, which believes if you think it can be possible, put that forth with all your might, then it'll become possible. That's wrong. That's like magic. It's bad. And um, all that stuff is the work of the devil. So I thought just by thinking something, it would become real. So I was afraid to think it because um, I had the wrong ideas that were not in the Bible. So um, I finally accepted, okay, I guess there's got the, the big tall black guy and the small skinny country or the small heavy country guy with a smooth um, blonde haircut, like not like mine, but like. But, but um, this other guy that was gay, I thought, thought they were going to come in and rape me and give me AIDS, one of my worst fears, but then not as bad as after the and what they do in those underground facilities that were so bad. So I thought they'd give me AIDS, so I just accepted it. Okay, I guess I deserve it for how I acted that first time when I was, in, when I was driven by fear and became a homophobe against mean to people. So I said, okay, I guess I'll just have to get AIDS and be raped. So I just accepted it, and that night I waited, waited, couldn't fall asleep that well for hours. I finally fell asleep a little bit, and then I woke up the next morning, and they didn't rape me at all. <clears throat> and just by thinking it, it didn't become real. It never happened, and I got out of the facility, went home. I, I was kind to people no matter what, even I thought, even if I thought they would hurt me or rape me, I kept being kind. I kept being kind to them, having faith that I was being nice, and um. All my homophobia went away. All my homophobia went away, maybe forever, probably forever. I don't think it's, you know, if it came back, I'm not going to ever be a homophobe because that's mean towards, you know, what are they going to do? What are they going to do to somebody like, it's not physical pain, the worst of it, it's, it they're probably not going to rape me, okay? You know, are they going to rape you or me or anyone? Who knows? Probably not. That's up to God. That's up to God. It's up to Jesus and God. 
and it's up to God what happens to me with that and it's probably not ever going to happen again because I went through a very Jesus like experience going across country starved dehydrated without sleep kept being kind to everyone every stop that I made and um, was hospitalized I kept having nightmares about it for weeks after it was about a month long experience a few weeks or so a month more than that maybe and um, then I was okay again and I and I did and I was kind through the whole thing. I didn't have to be tri I wasn't tricked by the devil into being the wrong way that that time. And I never will again. I never will again. I'll never be tricked by the devil. And it doesn't matter. They can hurt your body. They can hurt your body. Don't be afraid if someone can hurt your body or hurt you. Um, be afraid if they can hurt your soul. Your soul trick you into being mean in the wrong ways back to people or just mean back to people at all you don't ever have to be mean to anyone you don't ever have to be mean to anyone and that's the thing you should be afraid of when people try to fully you know make your soul corrupted or bad because then that means that you could really get tormented or some of you or none of you hopefully hopefully to God you get into heaven hopefully to God you get into heaven and um you're probably not going to get physically hurt, probably not going to get mentally hurt that much, but we all get hurt, we suffer, we get sick, we die, we age, we age and we're human, so, and it'll get happy, you know, I can't, I don't even know if I can describe how bad it felt this morning, yesterday, the day before, the day before, the day before, the day before, for a while now, um, just because of issues that I thought um, I was having problems but now I'm happy I feel happy I look okay I think my body looks in okay shape I look kind of strong I look <laughs> I, I look pretty strong uh, I guess even though I haven't been working out a lot but I work out here and there and somehow I feel happy um, I feel good I feel good right now so just that's it. Not just, don't just do that. I'm a flawed person. I'm going to put this video up. Okay. If you want, you can click like in the video. You can click like in the video. No. Um. That's it. Subscribe. More Jesus and God videos. Okay. Bye. My itchy under eyes pretty much went away. I haven't been itching them that much. I itched them a little bit, but not. It was in the shower, so it didn't hurt them. Um, I feel happy. Okay, bye. Find God and Jesus through the Bible. Find God and Jesus through the Bible. Follow the Bible. Amen. Here it is. Amen you this Christianity not this symbol this is just some program there it is Christian cross okay bye ah. bye move this to where move to here there's a Christian cross okay click like in the video bye